Congratulations. Keys in the tugboat. We're back. It's a new year. It's a new We're year. Back. It's 2015 years since uh, Christ peaced out. Is that how we're measuring things still? Yeah. Well, I guess uh, that's one way to do it, I suppose. So. I wish they would. I don't know why they have it as like AD, like after his death or something. It would be better if it was like after Christ or whatever. No, like, they changed it. It's uh, BCE, before current era, and then whatever the other one is. After current era or CE, current era. They got they took the they took the god out. They ungodded it. The scientists with their book smarts. No, the calendarists, calendarians. Caldurians? Sounds, like Cal sounds like an alien race from Star Trek. Calderons? Like Jose Calderons? He must be the one in charge of the calendars. Uh, okay. Him and his family. Uh, <laughs> that's interesting. Well, I bet you the people who did that probably um, had a nice formal education. I bet you, I bet you that was their like, family business. And then he was like the misfit child, and then he got out and just started playing basketball. But the rest of them like slave away over hot, steamy calendars all day, printing them and learninating on them, and like sit with little sextets and stare at the sky and track the stars, to figure out the calendar. And he's off running around playing basketball. He probably went to yeah, just college, got a formal education. Like uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer with like Hermie, and he didn't want to make toys. He wanted to be a dentist. Yeah, he's a troublemaker, man. Like, should have been yeah. put to death, probably, as a child. You hear that? Jose doesn't want to make calendars. <laughs> I haven't seen that in probably your lifespan. Really? I have watched it this Christmas which was awesome, and I made uh, two glasses of wine. Watch it, too, and she thoroughly enjoyed it. And never... I thoroughly tolerated it. <laughs> had she never seen it? No, she hadn't. I, I, she hadn't seen that. I hadn't seen uh, Charlie Brown Christmas, and man, people were not nice to Charlie Brown. No, he is, had just had a rough go his whole time, I think. I know. I think, to a certain extent, he kind of brings it on himself, you know, just... Giant stupid head. People hate him for it. Yeah, yeah, you know, he's just he's kind of sad, and people are like, "Cheer up, Charlie Brown." He's like, "No, I want to be sad," and uh, and yeah, just doesn't work out for him that well. Well, I guess when you have a negative outlook on life, it just kind of that happens. Like a self fulfilling prophecy. Um, but back on topic, nobody knows what we're even talking about in this conversation yet. So. Um, we're going to have a, a conversation about formal education um, brought to you by Cheese and the Tugboat. So let's, let's get into it. Tugboat. We're going to learn about learning. Wait. Get our learn on about getting our learn on. So uh, where, where, was, where, where did our system come from? Obviously, we've all been to school because <coughs> it's the law um, until you're 16 years of age in this country. But where did the where did the kind of style come from? So I did some research, of course, um, and by that I mean I listened to a couple of TED talks and didn't even look at Wikipedia for this one. But uh, basically, our education style that most of the most of the folks that will be listening to this went through is based off the British Empire stylings, and that's mostly just memory based. Um, when the English had their empire and they had the West Indies and had taken over when, when, India. What? What boat? Who? When was this? Um, just off the top of my head, I'm going to say somewhere in the mid to late 1800s through till probably the mid 90s. Yeah. Uh, it was pretty memory based. Uh, a lot of focus on here's a textbook with a lot of facts in it read these facts and put them inside your brain and then later you'll try and recall them for a test so and i know for a lot of us it just turned into okay well two days before the test let's just jam and cram as much 
knowledge into our brains as we can and then just regurgitate it all out on the test just puke it on the page and hope that uh, the way we do it brings us a strong to above average mark <clears throat> and I mean that worked for the way society ran for the last hundred years you just had to have knowledge and even once I started to get through university it wasn't so much you had to put every fact into your brain it was started to shift towards oh I don't need to know that I just need to know where to look it up and you began you began to kind of just learn where to look stuff up more and uh, and ignored kind of the, the the basics you know you didn't need to know what uh, what's his names oh man that's embarrassing that I forgot that but you didn't need to know the formula for calculating x you just need to know that it's in this book and you could look it up at any time and with technology coming along the way it came along that was possible because we could just you know look it up on the old interweb so. yeah like i want I mean, I you think of like when the open book test was invented because uh <laughs> uh yeah i don't know before you probably just you wouldn't like an open book test doesn't make any sense but now that's what everything is. It's like, okay, why would we learn need to learn this stuff without, say, a book or an iPod or something because we can just look it up uh, all the time? Um, like that's real life. But for whatever reason, these tests are like, oh no, you got to remember this without having looked at all these things. Well, in real life, I'm just going to go look it up. So why am I doing this? Yeah, and that and that kind of leads to you know things change a little bit over time and it's all the brain power initially was about okay just learn these facts crap these facts out start people started to realize well you know a little henry can crap out the formula for doing chemistry but uh he can't he can't balance an equation he, he doesn't know how to do some of the core concept stuff he just is it he can put it in the brain and then it comes out of the brain but he has no idea what what it's for what it means so they started to focus more on concept-based learning than they did on just straight-up memorization. And uh, and this kind of, you see that transition as you get older. Um, your brain's developing a little more. You start to get into high school. They focus more on this concept-based, which for a lot of yeah. us just turned into memorization anyway. I know every math test I ever did all through high school was not exactly learning how to calculate something it was just okay the example looked like this all i have to do is change the numbers and just do it exactly the same and i get the marks show your work yeah it can give you like a pretty good false sense of how smart you are like your ability to regurgitate versus your ability to like apply it to to life kind of stuff because uh some people are like really really good at memorizing things but can't quite like you said, apply it to like a novel situation or understand a concept of it. I know uh, off that there uh, a style is, is in Asia, like in China and stuff with math, is that they will actually get kids to memorize like their times tables before they even understand the concept of numbers, basically. Um, and then once they get a little bit older and they actually start applying it and actually understanding why this stuff happens they already have it sort of memorized so they're like ahead of the game so it's like memorize first and then we'll learn how to apply it later which i actually kind of feel is what the education system was sort of based on they expect you to just cram in all these facts and then when you get out into a job to like pull these facts out of your butt and uh, be able to apply them when a lot of them are like extremely irrelevant yeah, like, I, I'll never have to calculate the derivative of something probably ever again for the rest of my life. No. Um, uh, and it, it, it happens that the concept-based stuff comes in later in the education, so they try to get you to memorize all the facts, and then, okay, well, you're going to use these facts you learned in fourth grade, and it's just a given that you know how to do them. So if, if you struggled at one level once you get to higher levels where they're building off of what you learned previously, then you're kind of boned. So if you didn't learn Forget something when you were a little kid because you were looking up somebody's skirt, 
then when you get to high school, you don't have a chance anymore. Yeah, like just sort of like building on, I, I've seen there, there's like a specific graph that that's called, I think it's like a cohort graph or whatever where, yeah, you, you learn the stuff initially so you get put in that higher category and then you get better teaching and, and stuff. So then you get like infinitely better than that person who just sort of started from behind because then they got put in like the lower uh, education class and then they weren't taught as advanced stuff and they just kept getting, yeah, so you know. If you suck at memorization, then you're going to suck at schooling. Yeah. So now they've, they're changing and some forward thinking teachers are already starting to go to this system, but um, I watched an excellent TED talk by this guy. His last name, I believe, was Khan. So I'm just going to refer to him as, offensively as Wrath of Khan for the rest of the time. But um, he started to, he developed a system. He was working with his, uh, who, what? Wrath of Khan, that's Star Trek. Yeah, I don't like to bring the Star Trek in, uh, but there was no way for me to do a Star Wars Khan reference, so. Well, we'll, well that's all right. Like, I mean, like this person, I just think it's like for like a new educational style coming up from this, this TED Talk guy, like, you know, just his wrath. Like, yeah. You don't usually look at, Stuff. Educational revolution is a wrath of something, but well, so the the kind of impetus impetus of this was his uncle, or he was the uncle of these two kids that, you know, he's a math genius of sorts, and uh, they were having trouble with their math homework, so he wasn't always around. He was off on business or probably banging cocktail waitresses three at a time or whatever people do these days. <laughs> Classic cats in the cradle uh, situation. So he just started recording, like they would ask, send him a question, and he would record himself and put it on YouTube, get, delivering the answer with detail. And if the kids didn't get it first shot, they could just rewind it rather than say, "Okay, so wait, what do you mean?" They would just rewind the YouTube video and watch it as many times until they understood it. And because he's a, a damn expert. The answer he gives were, you know, very thorough and generous. So yeah, you know, yeah, like when you're exactly. like a little kid, you have your favorite movie and you just freaking wear out the VHS like Aladdin. Like I just watched Aladdin over and over again till That's, you know I understood for me the movie. I, hot, hot shots part two. Yeah, for like those people, like probably younger, like Frozen apparently gets Ugh. like rewound a lot. Yeah, I'm not. So. I'm not on board with this frozen business. This is my new Harry Potter. Just <laughs> totally yeah. gonna boycott everything to do with it. Oh, but it's so yeah. hot right now. Have you seen Frozen? It's so hot right now. Yeah. But, Actually, yeah. it's so they kind of he he developed a whole education system for math where it's all modular learning. So you finish a module and your teacher can track which one you're on. And uh, it's a whole program. It's actually quite riveting. So the kids, then the teacher knows, okay, little Johnny is done 1 through 12, but little Roberto, is he's only on number 3. So when it comes to, you know, trying to catch Roberto up, he can just turn to Johnny and say, uh, Johnny, you're on 12. Can you, instead of going on and, you know, working ahead, can you take a couple of days and teach little Roberto how to how to get up to at least six and then and then move it on and they can instead of them being the only teachers and the only resource now all of a sudden they can act kids to help their peers and we'll get into that a little bit later obviously you know obviously yeah. so there's like that little extra lesson in there that it's like you know like hey you're probably gonna have to work in groups or you're gonna be in society and some people won't get things quite as quick as you all the time and and you just you help them out and then you know uh, probably out on like the soccer field you know ronaldo is you know like the best in the world or something and then the other kid can't can't learn soccer so they're like hey man thanks for helping me with the math all soccer yeah. Or maybe Johnny really sucks at drawing and at art, and little Roberto can say, "Hey, here's how I do my shading for my, you know, drawings of ducks," and then little Johnny will improve his art skills. Who knows? But 
to summarize the kind of we went from where everything memory based stuff where everything where the students had to adapt to the material they had to learn how to learn it uh even with concept based the, you know still we're looking at <clears throat> here's the material you're responsible to learn it um the, the way things are moving is more we're gonna adjust how we present the material to how you learn because um one major problem with the education system as it stands is kids don't learn the same way now that they did hundreds of years ago and technology is a big factor inside of that so uh <clears throat> oh well this is going to be interesting cheese just dropped off the line for some reason okay so uh back on here had a little, little pause time um some some tds technical difficulties Anyways, yeah <clears throat> i was starting to blow it up on uh young kids these days learn different get their learn on a little different than uh you know the older kids did so like old times they used to like like cram stuff like in their brains and if their brains like rejected it and and didn't like like soak it up like a sponge they would just you know they kind of they wouldn't do so good eh he ain't gonna get no jar from the end times. What? So, I don't want to say millennials too much because it's stupid. I don't like talking about generational business in an yeah. in an educational uh, format. But uh, younger kids, uh, they call them. They say that the technology is native to them. So, kids these days, you know, they get your mama gets knocked up. All of a sudden, uh, she's got to sh- just ram a phone up there to, uh, into the old womb so the kid can uh, check his social media account. Got to stay on top of the Twitter and the Instagram and whatever else uh, they're using, you know, womb-wise, what they're, what they're getting in, going on in the womb. So Yeah, they can kind of go like, fourth finger today, yeah. hashtag, hashtag, nailing it. Hashtag. Four four finger hand hashtag missing the thumb. But uh, yeah, kids are they just they just know technology. So whereas our parents took them a long time to kind of adapt, there was early adopters. But you know, my mom is basically computer illiterate as far as I can tell. Uh, doesn't understand what a Windows update means. Uh, doesn't understand what files are. So you know, as those older teachers and whatnot move out of the system um things start to get a little more technified in the classroom but i think nowadays with our access to the internet everywhere um and i know our favorite comedian pete holmes has a pretty good riff about this but there is no time that if you think up a question that you don't just instantly get the answer like it's not like going to be a mystery like I wonder what year Robert Redford was born in. How old is Robert Redford? When we were kids, we'd have to, like, you know, that, that'd that be a mystery for us. We just would never know sometimes. Or you'd have to wait and find a newspaper clipping or or some kind of book that has his, you know, has that information, and then you'd look it up and find it and be like, huh, that's how old he is. Years older than when I originally wondered. And yeah. then the internet came along, and you could just, okay, let me just uh, fire up the modem. Beep, boop, beep, boop, beep. And like 20 minutes later, after the page loaded line by line, you'd have that information. Now, in a matter of 12 seconds, you could have that on the Google. The Googling. Oh, yeah. So, you know, kids, they don't need to memorize stuff because they can just, boom, have it. So unless, uh, you know, Walking Dead is real and it happens, they're still going to have the internet to look stuff up. So I mean, like, you know, in the, the concept of that show, I don't think Rick Grimes is concerned about the age of Robert Redford necessarily, but there's probably yeah. other things like how to kill a zombie effectively that he could easily look up on Google. It would probably help him. But so what, is your, what does your mom actually think a Windows update is? Uh, she had, just doesn't. I said, "Did you update your Windows?" And she just looked at me as if I had said, 
Um, did you put a new hair follicle inside your ear? Yeah. So, did, she, did she think it's like the Windows wants like a, like an update on her life? Like she's like, oh, Windows really wants to talk to me here. I, uh, how can I tell it that she just starts talking into the computer? Like, oh yeah, she is doing all right. He's got a podcast going and. I thought, you know, yeah. originally I thought it was, she was like, oh, well, I don't know, that might be too expensive. I mean, you know, we just put new windows in the bedroom, so if we're going to upgrade <laughs> all the windows, that seems like it's going to be too pricey. Well, like, if you put a window in the computer, like, you'll see right through it. You won't be able to see what's on the screen anymore. You'll see right through it. Mom, did you update the windows? Well, we did the bedrooms a couple of years ago, but the kitchen, <laughs> uh, you know, that's original. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Oh, parents. But, uh, yeah, so as, as younger people, you know, I know a lot of my uh, aged folks are uh, starting to get their teach on. They went to the old teacher's college, and, uh, you know, there's when I was in high school, you there was one kid that had a laptop and brought it to all his classes, and we were like, oh, man, what a loser. He's so rich, and he has a laptop. What an idiot, right? And then, you know, I, I don't think, and I haven't been to a university lecture in, uh, you know, almost coming up on a decade, almost. No, that's, that's not even close to being true. Five years, probably. But uh, I'm pretty sure that kids are using iPads in the class or just banging notes out on on uh, their phones, and etc. I mean, I had the bright idea to buy a little tape recorder and sit at the front and, and press record. Of course, I never did it because, you know, who buys tape recorders? But because what's a is tape? That your phone? What's what's a tape really? Oh, you had like hockey tape or electric tape, and it just you wrote stuff on it and just had a whole <laughs> stream. Yeah. Um, and uh oh, first tangent of 2015. When I was home for the holidays, uh, the CD player on the stereo doesn't work in the basement where we play pool. So we, the, but there's a cassette player that was operational. So we went and dug out a bunch of cassettes and in the cassette pile, at long last, I found <clears throat> basically an early version of an audio book, an audio cassette book oh, yeah. business, but it was He-Man and the Slime Pit. Yes. <clears throat> and I have been looking for that for four or five years just because of the chilling voice and how hilarious... I find it, and I found the tape mixed in with a bunch of, like, you know, 80s and 90s artists. So I have it, and I brought it back down to where I live here. However, I have absolutely no means to play it, so, you know, that kind of sucks. I'm going to have to try and get a tape player and record it and make a digital copy, but... Tangent 2015! So back on track. That's gonna be a thing all year. So I, I would say the younger teachers are really driving technology in the classroom, and that's helping kids learn in different ways instead of just you know banging down facts into your brain or writing on the blackboard, just writing the same thing over and over again. That's how I yeah, learned, that's how I learned how to spell was I just wrote the word probably fifteen hundred times, and then it's just in your brain. So now, yeah, now. They, now they use the, the technologies to get their learn on, and I think that is going to help the younger kids learn in a different way than we learned, and they'll be learning different things, which is kind of interesting because they need to because today's job market is totally different than when, say, I, as an older gentleman, came into the, uh, jumped off the old education ship and... Uh, uh -huh. You know, jump, jump, put both feet for face first into the the job times, but so pe people today what? are it's just different. You you're not asked to say, okay, well you're going to be a traveling salesman like uh, old Biff here and just drive around and make sales and say, uh, have you ever used a vacuum cleaner as good as this one? I mean, it really sucks, but. If you use this now, it's going to be, you know, email marketing campaigns and stuff like that. So people have to 
think outside the box a little bit more. I think nowadays they don't just sit in an office and swirl scotch around and smoke cigarettes and slap women's asses like Mad Men probably is, in my opinion. But uh, there's like an app. There's an app that'll do that for you. Yeah, they probably have an app that you know makes you feel like you're drunk, and then some kind of woman ass slapping yeah. devices. Yeah. You slap the woman's ass. You just go by really close to her, and then you like toggle your phone, and it'll go. Quash. Or there's, then, or there's a robot that you control with your phone, a little unmanned robot that you just drive around the office and do it. So while you're slapping their ass, you can be still at your desk getting work done. So it's just, oh, robot, and then the the robot will get charged with harassment, not you. Yeah, and who's to say that it wasn't controlled by uh, Reginald in IT? No one knows these things, but... Or, like, it kind of developed its own consciousness and did it out of its own free will, and then uh, we ended up... I think, problem that's, that. I think that's a whole other podcast on its own, you know, Skynet, intelligence. Yeah, there's, and... there's a new movie out called, I just saw a trailer, it's called Chappie, and it, it talks about that, but... Back to the topic, um, yeah, you talked a little bit about like this, uh, you know, you get this instant gratification because you can look up any sort of fact like immediately, and I just kind of wonder what sort of impact that will have on people's frustration level or like tolerance of frustration. So like what does happen when like these kids or even adults, like, they don't have access to that information immediately or if they find a project that's really really difficult are they going to be able to uh find a way to like problem solve through it or are they just going to like just completely self-destruct and just start throwing their ipads at the walls and you know flinging poop and stuff like that well it's like when the power goes out and all of a sudden your precious internet is no longer an option you know how are you how can you adapt to that can you survive because you've been trained and groomed and educated all the way through with this technology then if it goes away can you you know go back to learning how to do things manually like how to start a generator with just a piece of copper wire and a spark plug so yeah it's, it's interesting to you know the the people that still know how to do the old school way may become more valued if we get into an end of the world situation yeah or even um, wondering about like when you're growing up how when you didn't have the internet you would look to adults so like your parents or to teachers to give you knowledge of some sort but now you have like the internet that's infinitely smarter than any parent of any time uh, so like kids are like realizing maybe their parents aren't super smart or they perceive it that way because they have access to all this information I'd be, I never thought about that before that's kind of weird yeah but their parents like, it, Parents would still have the same access to that information, though. Pardon? Parents would still have the same access to that information, that, so they could kind of say, look it up, and if so the kid says, uh, what's the difference between polished walnut and mahogany? Uh, the parent could just look it up on Google and be like, uh, well, as you can see from this example I'm drawing on the blackboard that we have in your bedroom, um... Polished walnut, walnut looks like this, and mahogany has these kind of tones. And the kid's like, oh, man, my dad's the smartest. And then some other <laughs> kid's probably having a similar experience. And when they meet on the playground, he's like, my dad's way smarter than your dad. Uh, no, your dads, are, your dads are equally smart. They're Google smart. This made it sound the 50s. Like, just, oh, gee, thanks, Dad. You're the swellest. That's swell. Gee, well, good I, grief, Dad. I think it'll just, like, end up being, like, okay, son, you, do you want to look it up or do you want me to look it up? Yeah. Or I, just, oh. I don't have time for this. Or I'm not even home because I'm at work, so just look it up yourself. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. That's so not what, good. I saw people so, are going to get, like, just their, their tolerance frustration is actually going to go down significantly unless we have this sort of inherent thing where it just kind of goes up, okay, this is real easy now, we can look anything up, but there's still these 
super complex problems that we'll still have to figure out, and I guess we can tolerate the frustration. I don't know. Well, there's the basic concepts, too, that still need to be learned by the kids before they can apply what they see on the internet to a lot of stuff, but I don't look at it as the parents are going to be perceived as stupid. I think it's going to be the teachers, and I think there's a huge problem, especially in America, where the new class of teachers don't have the same level of education that their predecessors have and they're and apparently this is a huge problem i've seen some articles and some whatnot about how teachers are are dumber now and they are providing a crappier education to kids than you know 70 years ago because they weren't going for like the pure love of teaching or because they had expert knowledge it's sort of like let's churn them through this machine where you just kind of pay in and do a year of school and now you're a teacher and there well, you go there's that as as like that's part of the problem the other part is you know these people that learned like if, if you or i was asked tomorrow to go and say okay go teach these kids how to do calculus you know i don't remember how to do that because i stopped just putting it in my brain and started to learn you know where to look it up rather than having it in there so it's you know, our educate the way that we learned how to do things is different than how our teachers learned how to do things. And then now yeah. that we're starting to be the teachers, it's going to be taught differently to these young punk millennial kids than it was for us. So it's, I don't know, it's the whole thing's shifting in a different direction. But I'm not saying that the education system's broken. I'm just saying that it needs to be updated, and I think it needs to happen faster than the kind of pace it's on. So those, those are what I see as kind of problems or areas for improvement is to get the technology leveraged faster, which means we got to get these old fart teachers out of there sooner because um, kids just don't learn that way anymore. Like, uh, you know, teachers that we had were, they were good teachers. They did a good job, but they're still teaching when they're 70 and they're teaching to kids that are younger than their grandkids. It doesn't make any sense to me. Shouldn't be yeah. happening. Shouldn't happen anymore. So, uh, too sharp of a technology uh, curve there that they just they don't quite. Yeah, and it, quite it, it did happen relatively fast, but they also just didn't bother. They're like, "Well, I'll be dead before that becomes a thing." Yeah, so, yeah, or even yeah, uh, that, that is pretty interesting. I never really thought of like, I guess because I'm young and I kind of know these things, I didn't even think of that sort of sharp contrast, because, I mean, my grandparents know a little bit about computers, but they wouldn't be able to go into a classroom and be like, oh, yeah, hey, Billy, did you, um, you know, blah, 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 on your iPad? I don't know. I, would, yeah, well, I, I, think, I think they know how to do it, but they wouldn't be comfortable teaching someone else how to do it that didn't know how. Like, I don't think their level of comfort with technology, like, you know, could your grandpa go and teach one of his other old, people friends how to do email or what a file is and stuff like that i don't think they're at that level of comfort with where that with the technology to be able to teach it i think they can yeah they understand how to use it and they'd be like well if i click on this certain spot on the screen and i move the mouse four inches to the right and then down one inch that will get me to the save button so they have yeah. like stuff drawn on their desk of how to move the mouse like it's just it's a different uh -huh. way but and i've seen like well, this wasn't exactly the same as it was last time, so I don't understand it anymore. And, the, and I don't think they yeah. understand computers so much as if I click on this, it makes this happen. Yeah, or they, and they just start, if it doesn't work immediately, then they start, like, clicking it a million times. Or, no, and, they just uh, give up. They're like, oh, it's broken. Computer's broken. I don't, it, yeah. I, cl I, I clicked where I clicked last time, and then it just opened a whole bunch of porno there's all these girls having sex on the TV screen, and uh, it's broken. Yeah. They, uh, they just bang the computer to death. Plus, the the uh, like the whole grammar thing probably must make people from that generation's head explode when there's just like... They don't need to be hey, well, that generation. It makes my head explode. Yeah, so... Yeah, pretty, pretty sharp contrast. And the, the thing is, is, like, does it really matter? Um... In like in the future to be able to, because it's already happened where there's a significant drop in teaching people how to write things. Like they don't use uh, appropriate grammar or have nice prose or metaphors. It's like very short.
short formed and literal and just kind of garbage writing. But then when you're trying to communicate what you've learned to other people, are you going to be able to do a tweet or you have to like full on essay it up? Yeah, like, it's going to be pretty interesting, and and that's a good question. Does it matter? And I don't I don't know the answer to that. I'm sure we can. That that probably could be a whole other podcast because. For me to say, what what are you what are you up to, and for someone to write W A T space, the letter U lowercase of course, and then space, up, and then space the number two, you know the yeah. point the point still gets across what you up to, versus what are you up to, dear sir gentleman, um, yeah, and yeah I think we're lo- we're definitely losing that and they're adding stupid garbage into uh you know dictionaries like lol is one thing that drives actually absolutely bakes my beans but but lots of love you don't like lots of love chase lots of love (laughs) lots of love let's uh let's let's pin that one let's actually make that its own standalone maybe we can try and trim things down because i mean we're nipping along to 40 minutes here already ridiculously so Let's talk yeah. about future directions or possible solutions to these uh, potential problems in our education system. So one, I think, a big one is going to be less focus on the teacher being the instructor and have more focus on peer instruction. And I think this speaks to millennials a little bit more and just the way they learn um, and trust and social whatnot, which again could be a whole other thing which we talked about offline. But... Uh, you know, more and more, and I think with the Wrath of Khan system, it focuses the, on this a little bit more, where you're actually doing the homework in the classroom with the teacher and with your kind of peer instructors and, and colleagues, and you're doing your lessons on your own. So I, instead of get being assigned, okay, read chapter 12 and answer the questions at the end, at home, you just have a computer-based learning lesson where your teacher records themselves doing the lesson and you can pause it you can ask questions you can whatever text your friends oh i'm at 12 minutes and eight seconds what do they mean by that or i'm in module one what 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 does this mean so they it just allows them to to pace their learning a little better so that you know they they actually get it it's not like okay well we learned chapter one last week. I hope, hope you dummies got it because we're moving on to chapter 70. But uh, And then the other example, just to run my mouth slightly further, is there's a nice TED talk by this you know, delightful old fat Indian Santa Claus looking guy where he rammed a computer through the wall of his textile factory and just didn't, didn't talk about it, just kind of kept an eye on what was going on outside. And these little street rat Aladdin type kids just showed up and started farting around with it. And at first there was a few adults and they didn't really, they just kind of, wow, this is neat. This move When I move this circle, the little arrow on the screen moves around. Cool. But uh, within a month, kids had taught themselves how to use the internet, how to send emails, uh, how to make documents. Um, and one kid in, in, then they so they said, oh, that's an interesting concept. So they did it again in a different city, and because there's just you know hundreds of kids running around not in school, just you know just living on the street, and I guess that's how they do it a little bit more over there, kind of shanties and whatnot. But I don't want to get into the socioeconomic climate of India, but they did it in another city, and uh, after a month, they at first they said, okay, how do you do these tasks? And they asked two or three kids, and they had no idea. And then after a month, they asked the same two or three kids, and they were like, oh, yeah, you just do it like this. Boom, here you go. I learned it from so-and-so over there. And they learned that from this person. It just all built amongst their collective of how to do stuff. And uh, they got to the point that they could Google stuff, and they learned how to do, like, how to write a little genetics paper just based on what they could look up and, and stuff like that. So what those kids would never have access to, they actually taught themselves how to use computers and learn how to do stuff. So it was interesting that they could just pick that up and then through their collective 
expand the knowledge through their whole group without any adult interference. It's cool. Instruction. Yes. Yeah, so I like the the idea of the peer instruction. I think there just needs to be like somewhat I don't know, like some other like just more more structure and I think maybe again like you spoke before with the modules, having that sort of thing where you learn at home or learn on your own. Um, I know that now they're starting to think about those sort of things. Uh, I guess it's competing views where in university do you learn all this basic knowledge and then once you get into the workplace somehow backtrack and, and do it or do you get a project and you work on it your own and you learn what you need to learn and seek it out on your own because when you're intrigued or you need to learn something to solve a problem, you're going to get a lot more done um, and a lot quicker than when you're just memorizing random facts or working on these things just because you may need to know them later later on. Um, so, so yeah, I, I do like the idea of like peers getting together because it increases like social and you learn how to work with others, which I mean, everybody knows group projects are just awful, but if you do it from a young age, it may be like a little bit better. But uh, I still feel like there's got to be some sort of structure there because, I mean, how do you know people are going to learn certain things and not others and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, what's necessary and what isn't. And I can feel our future listeners either nodding along or arguing with us um, on that point. And I mean, just learning stuff that you're interested in learning is so much easier and more fun than, you know, learning when you go to first year university and you have to learn physics and chemistry and stuff that you don't give a hoot about and then you get into your third and fourth year where it starts to specialize into your major and stuff that you actually care about and want to learn about it just it just comes i don't know for me it was like you know 50s 60s 70s in the first two years and then 70s 80s 90s in the last two years when i was learning about what i want to learn about so if, yeah. if, if you're making your own curriculum, I feel like that's just giving you a better chance to be successful and actually retaining anything out of it. Oh, big time. And if you've ever, just anybody who has like a, a particular interest or a hobby, like they get like super, super into it and can just like go on forever about yeah. like nothing but... Uh, about economy uh, and people just look at you like you're a jerk. So that's, yeah. I think, and that's a direction that people are moving towards now is more peer instruction but the other direction that's more controversial well more entertaining at this time than actually <laughs> imp implemented is aptitude based learning so we've all seen Hunger Games and uh, all of us being cheese in the tugboat have uh, seen the Divergent movie or are familiar with that series of books I actually just bought all five. I read it I, bought all I read five. it all I, I haven't started reading them yet but I've, I saw the movie I actually watched it again over the holidays with the old fam and uh, just kind of moving the education system to something that's more aptitude based. So you do like they in those books or that those series, they have like a big test or where you're born or whatever. There's some kind of factor that determines what your destiny is going to be. And uh, we, if you were more in tune with Star Wars, we could really riff on that for a while. But yeah, um, yeah. But you're, you're born into the family or you're born into a district and like that's what you're supposed to do but in the divergent one you have an option of like switching over to somewhere else but then you can kind of like you're not allowed to like see your family anymore or you're kind of yeah. you either like family or, or you know you, they can be, or oh, yeah, you don't man. fit in you become factionless which is basically homeless yeah yeah, yeah. so like that kind of that suggests like if you don't fit in typically you're just going to get cast down um yeah if you if you but, don't fit into one of these five boxes then you're absolutely useless for our society and you know we're not going to kill you outright but we're just going to let you try and survive on your own and the whole system is built around this and you don't fit in so good luck jerks but yeah. I, and i think based on the movies and books the kind of ideas are put out there by the authors, and I think they're very intriguing and interesting, but I think there has to be some tweaking done to them. Um, you know. Well, it's just based on, like, any struggle that any person around that age is going to have. You have to, you're learning to be kind of independent, but you're also trying to figure out where you fit in the world or what you're good at or what your talents or what you think you should do in the future. And in this case, it's in a way sort of chosen for you. Um, and it's like, oh, hey, I'm good at, like, 
being really smart. So we're going to stick you in the smart people's care, uh, category, and you're going to hang around smart people, and then you'll all just be smart together, and everything will be cool because you just you fit in that, that area. Um, or, like, if you're really, like, risky, you can be in the risky risk-takers group. And to a certain extent, we all do that, um, find our, like, peer groups or whatever. But when you just tunnel yourself into that one area, something's got to give, and and uh, you just you won't be that well-rounded of a person. And then, yeah, what happens if you want to be a renaissance man and be, like, learn skills from all of these different places, the kind of, like, jack-of-all-trades, master of none, um, Maybe how's that going to like you would be divergent yeah exactly or like <laughs> which is apparently like the worst thing in that book but also like the best thing that can happen to you so oh i um, thought of the other one that we talked about before we started recording it's the giver giver yep god i am awesome at brain stuff but i think just to, to would, generalize that quickly and interrupt you and just talk over you because I have the microphone and you're just on the phone. Um, just, just to really tie it together, so, and then we can we can go on a little more ranty stuff. But it really just allows everything to be specialized, and you kind of optimize, and you're just you just live in your one little ditch, and you don't get to see the whole world. You just focus on what you're doing, um, which is kind of the way to be more efficient. And I think you could be more efficient in the time that someone's in school so instead of going till you're 23 if you're only learning how to do this one specific thing like oh you're really good at you know mechanic being a mechanic for cars you start learning that when you're eight and then by the time you're 15 you know you pretty much know all there is to know and you're a specialist and you know that's your that's your thing for the rest of your life and then you'd have you know ideally you'd have the opportunity to change or whatever to say well, I don't want to do this anymore. Can I try learning this? And then you go back to school for a couple of years or you expand into another version of mechanics. But anyways, I just want to get that point into the ether before we heat up too much because we're cruising past 47 minutes already. All right. Well, do we have any segments today? Do we have any specialized segments? I didn't have anything specific because my new year's resolution for the podcast and i think yours was to be more consistent with our delivery and mine is to and you know this is spoiler alert because i never told you this yet but mine based on the feedback i've gotten from our you know loyal not listener base uh, so that's people that we know that are like yeah i'm not gonna listen to that ever um the feedback from them has been Let's tighten it up. Let's uh, shorter. It's too long. I can't. Tight. I can't do an hour. Chop. Just tight. Tighten it up. Just bring it in. Bring it down. Cinch so, it. So we gotta cinch it. We gotta. Either someone's gotta edit it, which I know who that's gonna be, and make it into two, uh, or our hour-long format needs to change somehow. But I don't know. I like the hour. I think we really it takes a little while to. Hum it up. Get into a topic. All right. Ribbon around. I think we should send it off with both of our just real chip chop, little like little cinched up, tightened up. Uh, what's our ideal education? What do you think would work best for you? What do you think will will be the best ever education form? I find the the aptitude business to be pretty intriguing and allow specialization at an earlier age because I hate people. Well-known fact, I hate people, so I don't want to learn from my peers and I don't want to teach stupid people because I have no patience. So the peer instruction model that makes a lot of sense for the millennials, uh, no, not for me. So ideally for me, I think we go kind of concept-based, but you only learn the concepts that are going to apply for the rest of your life and you get pigeonholed because that's what I did. Okay. Well, I'm going to go um, off the grid. I'm going to go off the grid here. And uh, one thing that we didn't really talk about maybe later time, but I think that in schools there needs to be now like a little bit more um, life skills to be taught. Mm-hmm. Um, 
yes, you can do that at home, but some people don't have that best experience. So I think that like kind of emotional regulation, uh, that kind of stuff like being healthy, all that stuff can kind of be included. But I also like that sort of module system where everyone can kind of learn at their own pace in a way and if they can jump ahead or, or not. Um, and then being able to go back and maybe help out their peers having that option, but I think there also needs to be a little bit more value on, on creativity as well. So um, in school, there's not that much time to kind of think of new ideas or, or, or anything like that, and there needs to be maybe a little bit more fingering of that, like people's innate individual gifts that they probably don't get to express in all classes. So I think if there is any way to kind of do that in class, that would kind of be cool. Maybe just like a day, bring back show and tell, maybe a daily talent show, something like that. Well, I think you can, in the aptitude one, you can pick up kids that are more artistic or more creative and try to nurture that, <clears throat> put them in a stream where that kind of thing gets nurtured. But uh, I agree that the life skills and stuff like that, and, and, you know, just a show talking about education for an hour, that's the first time we brought it up was, you know, 50 minutes in. I think yeah. that's something that's really important on you, even you know, managing your daily intake of food and how to eat healthy, unless that comes from your parents, you're, and, you know, you're where you're going to get it. You're going to get it off TV or you're, or you're going to get it from a friend or something like that. Maybe that's an outside chance. Like, I don't remember ever sitting down with my friends before I was 25 and saying, um, do you think I'm eating enough fruits and vegetables? And... <laughs> And generally, your parents are providing that food. So if your parents are terrible at eating, they're like, well, here's dinner. It's a bag of dill pickle chips. Good luck. Pickles are a vegetable. Um, you're going to be screwed. Yeah, yeah, as a kid, you're like, woo, dill pickle chip dinner, woo. <laughs> yeah, as a kid. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so you would like some more specialization. I think I'd like to zip zap zip around and, and, and try out a jack-of-all-trades kind of thing. So that's where it is. So I don't know. There's no right answers, no wrong answers, but it's all messed up and some way we'll probably come up with a good idea. I think we could probably get into another another podcast. I mean, we can do another another day on a topic very, very similar. Um, talking about that. Yeah, what was the one topic we said we were going to put a pin in? Yeah, I don't remember what we talked about, but it was something. We'll have to listen to it, and then we'll do another one on that. Yeah, yeah, so somewhere in this podcast, everyone, we'll, we'll tease it out, and we'll rip into or, a new... Or just put it in the YouTube comments for us, so that we don't have to listen to ourselves again. Cause sort I, of talk amongst yourselves kind I, of thing. I don't really listen to these after they go up, so... Yeah. hi hope. Okay, well, that has been a conversation. I'm the tugboat. Cheese! And good night.